Here's how to lose fat using the most up-to-date scientific research. Welcome back, Dr. Milo Wolf here, PhD in sports science, breaking down how to lose fat in 2024. In this video, I'll be breaking down some of the tips that I've learned about during the past few years, looking at both the research and my experience as a coach. Have you ever heard the saying that weight loss is mostly diet or that you cannot out-train a bad diet? Well, when it comes to weight loss, that is likely true. A 2012 study by Foster Schubert and colleagues looked at exactly this question. Putting aside the control group, the exercise group performed 225 minutes of cardio per week at a moderate intensity. The diet group went on a low calorie diet. And finally, the fourth group combined the low calorie diet with a moderate intensity cardio each week. As far as weight loss went, while the exercise group did observe some weight loss, the diet group observed much greater weight loss and the group combining both diet and cardio observed the greatest weight loss. And this is generally the trend. While exercising can help with weight loss, exercising alone is unlikely to really dramatically cause you to lose weight. And generally, based on a review paper, endurance training appears to be better for weight loss compared to lifting weights. But even then, just exercise alone won't cut it, pun intended. Cut it, get it? So the main thing is going to be diet and specifically a calorie deficit when it comes to losing fat. Importantly, we don't just want to lose weight, we want to lose fat. And specifically, there's a risk of losing weight too fast that we're going to lose muscle alongside the fat. Conversely though, if we lose weight too slowly, we risk essentially just wasting time and having the diet and the cutting phase be longer than required. Most people are losing fat not just for health reasons, but also for aesthetic reasons. And for both of these goals, maintaining our muscle mass while we lose fat is an important goal. Considering these issues, how fast should you be losing weight? Well, a recent review paper suggested rates of weight loss of about 0.5 to 1% of weight loss per week. Generally, if you're higher in body fat, you can likely be closer to 1% of weight loss per week, whereas if you're lower in body fat, you likely want to stick closer to about 0.5% of body weight per week. Equally, consider how well your lifestyle and your general physiology lends itself to losing weight faster or slower. If you're someone who's highly stressed, is not really in control of your food environment, has a lot of outside stressors, has poor sleep, and generally struggles to lose weight without being super hungry, consider going a little bit lower or a little bit slower in terms of your weight loss pace. Conversely, if you're someone with low stress, with a great food environment that you're in control of, you can essentially dictate what you're putting in your mouth at all times, and you have great sleep, and you generally don't struggle to lose weight, you can probably go as fast as 1% of body weight loss per week and be just fine. In my opinion, if you're in any doubt regarding this question, go closer to 0.5% of body weight loss per week. It's the safe bet. Well, now that you know how fast you want to lose weight, you also need to figure out how many calories to consume. As I mentioned earlier, the main way to lose weight is going to be to establish a calorie deficit. But how big should your calorie deficit be? There are three steps to figuring this out, so follow along. First, we need to calculate your maintenance calories. Look up any total daily energy expenditure calculator online, put in your stats, and you'll have the results. While these calculators won't be perfectly accurate, they'll give you a pretty good ballpark of where to start as far as your maintenance calories go. Importantly, stick around until later in the video where we talk about how much you should work out and whether or not you should incorporate cardio to accurately fill out this questionnaire. Now that you've determined what your maintenance calories are, we want to determine how big your deficit should be. Multiply your percentage of weight loss goal per week times your body weight. If you weigh 90 kilograms, for example, and you want to lose 1% of body weight per week, multiply 90 kilograms times 0.01, which gives you a pace of weight loss of 900 grams per week. As a good rule of thumb, to lose a pound of fat, you would need to be in a deficit over time of around 3,500 kilocalories. Conversely, for a kilogram, that would be around 7,700 calories. So multiply the amount of weight loss that you want to achieve per week times this amount, and that gives you how much of a deficit you should be in on a weekly basis, or your weekly calorie deficit. Then, to make it really simple, divide this by 7 to give you your daily calorie deficit. And finally, now that you've got your estimated maintenance calories and your daily calorie deficit goal, you can subtract your daily calorie deficit goal from your estimated maintenance calories, and you have your target daily calorie intake. To track this, use an app like MyFitnessPal or MacroFactor and you'll be able to track your calories based on the food you consume. Now that you've established your calorie intake, let me give you a few tips that are really important to make sure that you successfully lose fat and to maintain your muscle. First, make sure you have sufficient protein. As far as your diet goes, this is one of the bigger things to pay attention to. Based on a meta-regression in 2017 by Morton and colleagues, 
having around 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram per day is going to be beneficial when it comes to gaining muscle mass or retaining muscle mass during a diet. Ideally, spread this across three meals or more per day. If you can't do this due to lifestyle constraints, don't worry too much. The main thing to focus on is daily protein intake. In fact, one recent study by Tromlin and colleagues did find that even having 100 grams of protein in a single sitting didn't waste protein. There were still positive effects on muscle anabolism. My next big tip is to have plenty of fruits and vegetables and more broadly, any foods that have a high fiber content and a low energy density. There's a few reasons for this. One, these foods will typically satiate you more. For instance, one meta-analysis has found that the lower the energy density of the foods you consume, the fewer calories you tend to consume by about 200 to 300 calories. Additionally, a higher fiber intake has been linked to better overall health outcomes, and I have a whole video on fiber intake for health here. Likewise, a higher consumption of fruits and vegetables has also been linked to more positive health outcomes. And as far as managing hunger during a diet goes, consumption of fruits, vegetables, beans, lentils, pulses in general is going to be helpful as they usually have a high fiber content and a low energy density both things that generally satiate you. Next up, set up your environment for success. Make it easy for you to stick to your diet and harder for you to go off your diet. That means a few things. Make your diet convenient, visible, accessible, and more. Make it convenient by mostly consuming foods that require minimum preparation or minimum amount of time and hassle to consume. Cutting down on cooking or preparation time can be really handy when your life gets busy and you still want to stick to your diet. Make sure those foods are visible. If you see those foods, you're typically more likely to consume them. And finally, make sure it's sustainable by simply having foods that you generally enjoy and are happy to eat consistently for a few weeks or months while you lose fat. Conversely, when it comes to foods that aren't as conducive to your diet success, you can think of highly palatable, highly processed foods. Typically try to keep those ideally outside of your apartment, which then adds an additional barrier to entry to going off your diet. However, if you can't keep these foods out of your environment altogether, consider making them less visible. For example, putting them in an area of your pantry that you're unlikely to go to often. So at the very least, you're reminded of that food's existence within your apartment less often. You've probably noticed that if you just have snacks lying around in your house, it makes it a lot easier to consume without really thinking about it. Whereas if you hide them away, it makes it a little bit harder. So generally, just make diet conducive foods easier to consume and non-diet conducive foods harder to consume. An additional tip that I've recently become aware of is to potentially have more of your calories early earlier in the day. A line of research suggests that having more of your calories earlier in the day, say in your breakfast and lunch, generally leads to higher energy expenditure across the day compared to having more of your calories later in the day. So essentially, when given a choice, try to front load your calories more so into your breakfast and lunch versus having most of them in the evening. It's not great to make a night and day difference, but it is a small hack that can potentially increase your energy expenditure a little bit and add up over time. My next big tip is to weigh yourself regularly. People who weigh themselves more often typically experience more diet success. If nothing else, it gives you more data to go off of when deciding whether to make adjustments to your calorie intake, for example. Personally, during the weight loss phase, I try to weigh myself nearly every day, if not every day. Then, if I'm ever stuck at a certain weight, I look at my seven day averages. By drawing averages of my past seven days, I'm able to wash out any major fluctuations in body weight day to day. And this gives me better data to go off of when deciding whether or not I should reduce my calorie intake to facilitate further weight loss. In general, as a rule of thumb, if your seven day average weigh-in hasn't been dropping as fast as you set out for it to, for a week or two in a row, generally two weeks is a better time frame. then I would reduce calorie intake by one to 300 calories. A common mistake I see made by many people is to be very quick to drop calories very fast when they don't lose weight for a day or two. In general, your weight can go up and down day to day due to fluctuations in sodium, water weight, fiber, and a whole host of other things. But looking at seven day averages and being a bit more conservative when it comes to making adjustments can really help you out. Generally, try and eat mindfully. It's not a huge game changer, but slowing down the rate of eating and focusing on the act of eating may help you a little bit when it comes to managing hunger. My next tip is to consider taking creatine monohydrate. 
This has been known for a while, but many people are under the impression that when you're cutting, you shouldn't take creatine. Creatine is just as beneficial during a cut as it is during a bulk. Just because it can cause an initial increase in weight does not mean it isn't beneficial. And in fact, that increase in weight is usually a sign that it's working, as creatine binds to water within your muscles, potentially making you look a bit more muscular. And importantly, creatine improves your performance within the gym, potentially helping you to maintain muscle mass during a cut. The final section of this video will focus on training advice. Working out has two primary objectives when it comes to fat loss. The first is keeping your hard-earned muscle where it is so that you don't cut down to nothing. And the second is to increase your energy expenditure, potentially increasing your calorie deficit and making you lose fat a little bit faster. Ultimately, exercising for energy expenditure is definitely secondary in importance to establishing a deficit via your diet. As far as training to maintain muscle mass goes, train at least twice a week for each muscle group with at least 5 to 10 sets per week per muscle. You can go higher than this if you've been training for a while, and it's recommended if you want to maximize your chance of maintaining muscle, and depending on how fast you cut, potentially even gain muscle. Recomp is absolutely possible, depending on the circumstances. But generally, training each muscle twice a week with at least 5 to 10 sets per week is a good starting point for beginners, and over 10 sets, maybe between 10 and 20 sets per week per muscle is a better starting point for more advanced trainings. Your training doesn't need to look different when you're in a surplus versus when you're in a calorie deficit and aiming to lose weight. With that being said, if part of the reason that you're losing weight is to finally see your abs, then consider direct ab training as well. The abs, or the rectus abdominis, are like any other muscle groups. When you train them directly, they increase in size, making them more visible and impressive. So train them twice a week at least, with maybe 5 or 10 sets per week per muscle at least, train them close to failure, train them the exact same way you would train any muscle group. One common mistake with ab training is to simply do very easy exercises for super high reps and never actually going close to failure. Instead, train them with sets of 5 to 50 reps with weight if necessary and go close to failure on each set. While I spoke about protein intake earlier as being helpful for maintaining muscle, keep in mind that lifting weights has by far a larger impact on retaining muscle. So even if you can't have a perfect protein intake, do make sure that you're lifting weights at least twice a week to maintain your muscle during a cut. Equally, do not be too worried if you lose some muscle during a cut. Regaining lost muscle is a lot easier than gaining it in the first place. I have a whole video on muscle memory here that you can check out. Now, let me give you some guidelines on working out for fat loss. Besides lifting weights, which is helpful for retaining muscle mass, but not necessarily as helpful for just increasing fat loss or burning calories, there's two primary ways in which I'd recommend exercising for fat loss. The first is getting plenty of steps in. Download a step tracker and set a daily goal for how many steps you want to get in. I recommend between 6 and 12,000 depending on how much time you have available, how physically active your lifestyle is, and your preferences. The main thing with your step goal is going to be consistency. Consistently reach your goal. Walking has many benefits. It's sociable in that you can go for a walk with your family or friends, you can even take a call while doing it. It exposes you to sunlight, which potentially helps regulate your circadian rhythm. And there are many studies now finding a beneficial impact on health of getting more steps in. Importantly, getting more steps in can have a pretty profound impact on your rate of weight loss. If you go from getting no steps in at all, or next to no steps a day, say a thousand or two thousand, to consistently getting in 10,000 steps or more, for example, that could increase your rate of weight loss by a pound a week or more. Over just 12 weeks, that would be an additional 12 pounds lost. If you want to estimate how many calories you burn while doing steps, a good rule of thumb is one kilocalorie per kilogram of body weight per kilometer walked. Now let's say you're busy and you can't get more than about 6,000 steps in or even fewer than 6,000 steps. What can you do instead? Well, you might want to consider formal cardio sessions. If you're only working out for fat loss, consider forms of cardio that are easier to recover from. Generally, those are going to involve minimum impact, so running is out of the question, and fewer eccentric contractions. And so generally, I like cycling and I like the elliptical machine. If you're going to be doing cardio within the gym, a good approach is to set a calorie expenditure goal within each session. While those calculations aren't perfectly accurate, they will be a good enough thing to aim for. For example, you could do four weekly sessions of 300 calories of energy expenditure on those machines, and this would result in potentially an increase of a third of a pound of fat loss each week. Alternatively, do your physical activity in any way you can. For example, team sports or group classes are a great way to get more physical activity in. Even though it's not as easily trackable as far as energy expenditure goes, and it may involve some eccentric contractions and impacts, the main thing is that you're becoming more physically active. And these activities have other benefits like you're more sociable and generally are very health promoting. Ultimately though, the impact of more physical activity or working out specifically for expending energy 
is generally going to be secondary in importance to dieting. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. For instance, a recent meta-analysis found a pretty meaningful association between how physically active you are each week, both in terms of moderate physical activity and vigorous physical activity, and the likelihood that someone is going to suffer from ill health. My final piece of advice is that if your sleep is currently very suboptimal and there's something you can do about it, consider doing it. Generally, very poor sleep has been shown to negatively impact how much fat you lose versus how much muscle you lose during a diet. And so, to increase muscle retention during a weight loss phase, improving your sleep can help out. That is the video. I broke down a lot of the relevant science and explained to you how to lose weight and my top tips in 2024 to do so. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like down below, comment, subscribe. I know many of you aren't currently subscribed and I would really appreciate it if you did. Likewise, hit the bell as well and that helps out the channel. If there's any other topics you would like to see me cover, leave a comment down below and I'll get to them. If you'd like me to coach you, consider checking out the link above and I could become your coach. In the meantime, have a fantastic day and I will see you guys next time. Peace.